What's going on, Route 66 travelers? Hey, this week we're pulling off of the highway and we're going to take a rest stop as Paul writes another letter to his young disciple, the book of 2 Timothy. Paul knows he's coming to his finish line. So he writes his second letter to Timothy and he says, brother, it's your turn to carry the baton. Now this book speaks to people on both sides. It speaks to those who need to recognize that they are the Paul and it's time to pass the baton. But it also speaks to those who are Timothys who need to take up the baton and now carry it. And this happens in the phases that it goes through. It's a lot like the idea of raising children. Every mentorship and discipleship-based relationship goes through phases like this. Consider the way it breaks down according to Paul. There's kind of, there's three phases in four parts. The first is the parenting phase. This is where you're taking them to your side, under your wing. You're instructing them. You're teaching them how to learn. The second one, part A, is pace setting. As you disciple and instruct and parent somebody, you're going to set the pace for how they're going to grow. And they are going to in turn then follow your lead as you create that pace for them. Then there's phase 2B. That's the partnering phase. See, now they're a fellow worker with you. They're alongside you. They're one who now does as you do. This is where Paul is now trying to lead Timothy in because he is trying to get him to fully accept phase 3, the passing of the baton. That's what's occurring in this book. And in this letter, he writes, hey, Timothy, guess what, brother? You are ready and so am I at this point. It's time for you to take up the baton because I, Paul, have fought the good fight, I've finished the race, and I've kept the faith. But it's got to be continued. It's a continuation process. And the most important aspect, Paul says, is that you do it. You pass it on. You need to take it and continue to pass it. And Paul's telling Timothy and us through this process that if we're going to advance the gospel and if we're going to continue to pass that baton on to the coming generations, we have to, number one, serve boldly. And Paul wants Timothy to do this through what he knows is a gift of speaking that Timothy has. Now, Timothy's timid, and so he has to encourage him. And the real picture that Paul gives is the words that he speaks. He says, fan the flame. This is the key verse. It's fan the flame, the gift of God, which is in you. Now, there may be a time in life where God has said to you, hey, you had a gift. You used it, and it was great, and there was reward, and there was joy in it, but something happened. Maybe you got hurt or burnt out, and so you stopped. Well, guess what? Don't be sucked out of it. Instead, fan the flame, and don't let it go out. And to do this, though, he tells Timothy, you got to talk the talk, man. You got to speak up and speak boldly. Why? Because all scripture is inspired by God. It's breathed out by him. This comes from God Almighty. So no matter what the season, you can boldly speak, knowing in truth that it is from God. But, you know, you can't live different than what you're speaking. So what you have to do in partnership with that is walk the walk. You got to do yourself, to do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who is not in need of being ashamed, but you're rightly handling the word of truth. And in so doing, then you avoid the worthless and foolish talk. Don't get involved in the worthless, foolish, stupid arguments that people get involved in. Now, like Timothy, you may have questioned whether or not you were ready. Maybe it was the whole argument that Timothy had, I'm, I'm too young. I'm too young, so I'm not ready. I'm not like you, Paul. And we could feel that in our own lives that, you know, maybe we're not strong enough or we think we're not confident enough. And many people that God asked to do this, they, they, they want to talk and walk and they want to speak boldly, but their excuse is, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. And so that's why I think Paul followed up the fanning into flame, the gift, by reminding Timothy that God did not give us a spirit of fear. And that's why people think they're not ready is they're afraid of what's going to be coming. And he says, I mean, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. No, he's given us a spirit that is full of power and of love and of strength. There is a self-control and a self-discipline that he's given us to be able to do this. God didn't create us in a state of fear. He is our power. So Paul tells Timothy that when you submit yourself to God and you come across that opposition, you don't have to fear. Instead, you just simply, through Paul's second lesson, suffer bravely. You do this with courage because a good soldier at times is going to suffer. 
But you don't want to forget that if we endure it, we also get to reign with Christ. And the Lord will rescue us from all of the evildoers and the evil deeds. So if we decide and choose that road, we will serve boldly. We will suffer bravely. And no matter what the circumstances, we can expect it and we can endure it. So the challenge to the Pauls, it's not how you start that's important, but how you finish. And the challenge to the Timothys, it's your turn to carry the baton. So keep studying these verses, these scriptures individually in your groups with your family. Encourage one another and memorize them for the power of God to be within you. And we'll see you this next week as we step back on the highway. And we're going to get into the final of the pastoral epistles as Paul writes his letter to Titus. Until then, happy studying. <laughs>